How would you feel if someone did something awful to you, then instead of apologizing, they just laugh about it as if it's nothing? That's what happened to this family in Michigan. After losing their son in the most cruel way, they expected the person responsible to at least show some remorse, but he didn't. Instead, he just smirked at their pain and acted like he did nothing wrong. Let's dive in. The story of Jordan Michael Clay started on July 26, 1998, when he was born to Karen Clay and Sean Bristol. His dad died five months before he was born, so he never got to meet him. Despite the tragic loss, Jordan had a pretty normal childhood, and he was the pride and joy of his mom. He was cool, outgoing, and genuine person who just loved having fun and living life to the fullest. He was the kind of person that everyone just loved to hang out with. He was just friends with basically everyone and there was never a dull moment with him. Jordan grew up in Washtenaw County, Michigan. He attended Slauson Middle School and later went to Pioneer High School. There, he excelled in his studies by maintaining a 3.7 GPA. He was also a great athlete and played in the school's football team, never missing an off-season workout or team functions. Due to his hard work and dedication, he was always receiving awards such as the Scholar Athlete Award and the NAACP Award. Jordan loved working with his hands. He would take paper clips and rubber bands and just make stuff out of it. He hoped to become an engineer one day. The year 2016 was supposed to be the best year in Jordan's life. He had just turned 18 years old and was living alone in a condo complex in Ann Arbor. It was his final year in high school and he was looking forward to graduation and prom. He was also super excited about joining the University of Michigan next year. On October 4th, a maintenance worker at the complex heard some gunshots. He ran to check and found Jordan lying on a path outside the building building with a single gunshot wound to his head. The police were immediately called to the scene and they started investigating. The investigation took only a few days as soon three teenagers were arrested in connection with the crime. The three boys, Delerno Gracie, Jeremis Ellison, and Donta White were accused of taking Jordan's life while they were trying to rob him. In this story, I'll focus most on Donta White. So Donta made headlines, not because of what he and his friends did to Jordan, but because of how he behaved in court after the crime. Just like his co-accused, Danta was 17 years old when this happened. According to his mom, he was also a senior in high school and was about to graduate. After his arrest, Danta appeared before a judge for his pre-trial hearing. A pre-trial hearing is basically like a mini trial. Both the defense and prosecutor present their case before the judge, and he then decides if there is enough evidence to charge the accused. So when Danta appeared in court, he decided that this was the perfect time to confess everything. He told the judge how he and his friends gunned down Jordan while trying to rob him. As a result of that armed robbery, what did you do with that gun and Mr. Jordan Cleese? Shot him. And where did you shoot him? On the top. His voice was so calm as he answered the questions from the prosecutor that you'd think he was talking about something normal, like what he ate for breakfast, and not how he took someone's life in cold blood. Jordan's mother, who is sitting a few feet from her son's admitted killer, could barely contain her tears as she listened to how her only son died. And that was not even the end of it. Now this type of crime would normally get you life in prison, but Danta had already made a plea deal with the prosecutor to accept the charges of second degree homicide an armed robbery in exchange for a shorter sentence of 23 to 50 years. However, he still had to face Jordan's family in court for the sentencing hearing, and that's where everything went downhill. Usually, before an accused person is sentenced, his victims are given an opportunity to give an impact statement in court. A victim impact statement is written or spoken statement that describes how the crime has affected you either emotionally, physically, or economically. This helps the judge to decide what sentence the defendant should receive. So in this in this case, Jordan's family members appeared before the judge and poured their hearts out, telling him how much pain Jordan's death had brought in their lives. Jordan's distraught mother, Karen, was so grief-stricken that she could barely speak. She sobbed as her cousin read the statement on her behalf. I've lost my only child, my son, my baby, my friend. More than that, I've lost laughter and love. I no longer have the hope of having grandchildren. She recalled how her son would bring her a Wendy's Frosty after finishing work just to see her smile. I no longer get to see the smile of my son when he walks through the door and brings me a Frosty from Wendy's at the end of his shift. She went on to say how Jordan's senior year was supposed to be a celebration, but instead became a nightmare. She described the pain and anger she felt every time she thought of the person who took her son away from her. On the nights I manage to sleep, I wake up hearing my son scream for me to then have to realize all over again Night after night, my son is dead, gone, taken, 
for what? Why? As the statement was being read, Dante was just sitting there, smiling and laughing and acting like what he did was not a big deal. When he finally got up to speak, instead of apologizing and showing some remorse, he just casually said that he would be out soon. What would you like to say? I just want to tell y'all, I'll be home soon, or I'll be Keon, I love my family. Can you believe this? He just took someone's son away, and then has the guts to mock their pain in court. That's another level of evil. The judge was infuriated by Dante's uncaring attitude. He told him how he was even thinking of rejecting his plea deal and go to trial instead. Watching you sit there, smile, laugh, and shake your head like this was no big deal, I'm very tempted to just say, I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial. And if you're convicted of felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. The judge even told the prosecutor to take time and consult with Jordan's family to see if they would like to go to trial. That definitely wiped the smirk off Dante's face. But fortunately for him, Jordan's family just wanted everything to be over with so they could move on with their lives. We family um, does want to move on with this. They want to get some closure from this case and they want to try and forgive this defendant and all of his actions. Dante's defense lawyer also apologized on his behalf, saying that the teen suffered some sort of emotional issues and that some people display fear by smiling. When my client asked me to apologize to the court. His smiling was in no way meant as disrespectful either to the family, to the victim, or to this court. In the end, Dante was sentenced 23 to 50 years for second degree homicide and armed robbery. He also got another two years in prison for a felony firearm. Following the hearing, Dante's mother, Antoinette Carter, came out to defend him, saying that he was innocent and that he had some mental illness that should have been considered in court. Though she could not specify what condition her son suffered from, she said that he usually handles everything fine in life by smiling. She also went on to say that her family also suffered because of Jordan's death. I'm, just, I'm sorry for her loss, just as well as mine. My son was supposed to graduate this year, too. And I mean, it's just bad all the way around. Well, I get what she's saying. You just can't compare the two losses. Karen just lost her son completely. She would never get to speak to him or see him ever again. On the other hand, Antoinette could visit her son in prison whenever she wanted. And also her son was the culprit. He knew what he was doing when he pulled the trigger. So I'm sorry, but he deserved more than he got. Anyway, Dante's accomplices, Jamaris and Delarno, got a lesser sentence of 15 to 40 years after they also pleaded guilty to the charges. Dilarano apologized to his family and Jordan's family, but Jamaris only apologized to his family. This case is just insane. Taking someone's life is already bad enough, but then you act like you did nothing wrong? That's just cold. For me, 23 to 50 years is not enough time to pay for such a heinous crime. I feel really bad for Jordan's family. The pain they went through after losing their son must have been great. And then they had to watch their son's killer make a mockery of their loss. I'm even surprised they did not decide to let him face the full wrath of the law in a trial. Jordan was an intelligent and hardworking guy with a bright future ahead of him. He did not deserve to have his life cut short like that. May he rest in peace. That's the end of our video today. What do you think about this case? Should Dante have been given life in prison? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section.